Philip Riley. Oh, hi. Cool. How you doing? I'm doing good. Oh, there you go. There you are. Take my mask off. Cool. There you go. I was going to try and get a Christmas tree behind me, but this is darker, so it's better. I have this mask from Chiapas. Look, let me show you my mask. Mine is from a non-binary um, fabric shop. Because <laughs> I live in a very cool place. But you live in a cool place as well, don't you? I live on the edge of Lake Washington. And um, okay. I'll turn the uh, camera around here. Oh, wow, what an amazing spot. I'm going to show you the Christmas tree as well, as soon as, soon as I'm here next to the Christmas tree. You oh, that's right. You were going to be in a cafe, you said. Yeah. So, so um, it, it, the reality is that they, they we we have to leave cafes at seven o'clock. So they might chuck me out, um, but um, we are allowed to be outside until nine. We're on a curfew. How far out that is? I know it's so bizarre. It, it's it, but it's a bizarre thing. The whole thing, isn't it? But I mean, obviously, this year. I mean, this is the first year I've joined. And um, a really brilliant um, poet called uh, Lynn Shapiro um, recommended that I I do it. Uh -huh. And of course, this was this was before um, we hit the pandemic. And, and and what I wanted to say was, it's a brilliant, brilliant thing, scheme, idea, concept. <laughs> and um, also this year, particularly, I'm sure it was a very nurturing thing for a lot of people because. Um, the poems I received were obviously from lovely people, and obviously lovely people want to write poems, poems, poetry generally. But there was a lot of um, emphasis on nature and looking at nature. And we had more time to look at nature, didn't we, during the pandemic, for example? Right. There were fewer distractions. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. And also, like um, a lot of us were practicing mindfulness, so it's very mindful to watch birds. I mean, I, I took photographs every day of water um, because I, I, I'm, I'm a photographer and, and an artist. And so, um, yeah, so that was very meditative for me. And also like the, the changing, obviously changing seasons, but, you know, just capturing moments in time, you know, this is, the pandemic is a moment in time. And I think that, you know, that was good to remember. Well, it's very, it's very important, I think, for poet, poets to be witnesses of what's going on. And, yeah, you know, sure. when you, when you um, are able to ground yourself in a place or in the luminous details of that place and time, then what happens uh, is that should that change, we recognize, wow, 10 years ago, Scotch broom, which is an invasive species here, was blooming <laughs> okay, in May. Good. Now, Scotch now it, broom, is it? Yeah, Scotch broom. And, and now it's blooming in April, so the climate is a little off, you know? And I think it's important. Yeah. So poets, as witnesses who notice these things, um, but you, you say most of it, you got a lot of nature poetry. Did I detect a, a note of disdain in that? Well, yeah, maybe I'm, hopefully I'm not that much of a disdainful person, but what I was going to say, I don't know how long the interview is, but um, I've written my poem out on a big piece of paper because obviously I'm a visual artist and I might forget it. My, so my poem's quite short and um, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about the logistics of sticking, sticking words on a piece of paper because my, um, quite often pit poems are really long, aren't they? So some people did type them out. This is pure logistics. So some people typed them out and put them in an envelope. But as an artist, I actually made a series of special postcards. So my postcards were themed about journeys and I used antique um, bicycle um, cigarette cards. That was the, one of the one, and they were collages. So once I'd made the, the, the collages, I was kind of had to stick to um, the uh, shorter poem format. Um, but that was okay. Um, and my other point about it is that, so I did write nature poems, the poem I'm going to recite tonight or to say tonight is um, a poem about nature. But, you know, I think this has been a tumultuous time. And um, my more personal poems are about relationships. And uh, they have quite a lot of bad, bad words in them. 
So, uh, so I didn't really feel as if I wanted to share. But they're very personal, but I didn't want to kind of, because I didn't know the people I was sending to, and it was very personal. Um, but um, yeah, so uh, there's different strands of people's poetry. So I, I use nature in my work. I actually, um, I collect berries, I collect um, dry seed heads, you know, so um, the nature part was easy for me, but you know, there is another personal strand to my poetry, which I might allude to later on as well. What kind of berries? Well, you, that's a good question. So um, my studio last time I was here in Cyprus was uh, in a garden center. So I, I collected these amazing seed heads, which fell from a tree. And when they, when they banged on the ground, they per formed two perfect heart shapes. So they were very, very beautiful. And I, I, I painted them white, and then I painted them different colors, then I applied, applied them to buildings. And then um, kind of as an offshoot of that, I did these interventions on buildings in Paphos Town Centre, where I use these um, berries, these little yellow, yellow berries. The seasons here are very, very quick. So um, I think early in the year, there's these little, um, yeah, earlier in the year, there's these little yellow berries. And I, I, they have a Greek name, but um, my work is interactive. So I take people on, on guided tours of my work and uh, they speak and they interact with the artwork. And um, on the tour, when I took the two people on the tour, when I, I stuck the berries on buildings, um, people talked about recipes that they'd, they'd used the berries for. And their parents, had, like grandparents particularly, had made them into jam and uh, juice and things like that. So um, it's, what I'm trying to do is, is to reflect my love of nature back to the people who live here, because obviously we're in a transitory a trans period of transition where people don't look at nature. But as we spoke about at the beginning, a lot of us have looked at nature more this year, for, more than ever before. It's interesting that um, when you talk about berries in a place uh, where you're visiting or not familiar with, I'm reminded of a tour of a, a large park here a couple of miles to the north, which um, has trees that are 300 uh, years old in it, some old growth wow. trees. And yeah. we got a tour from a permaculturist and so we were wild crafting and he was giving us tiny little tastes of licorice fern and and then there developed basically two questions about any particular plant one yeah. was <laughs> the, the first one was should you cook it with bacon <laughs> and not 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 that it's going to poison me will it poison me that's and well no i mean if it it was understood that they were edible or or smokable was the other question or you got, or, you got, or, or your part your partner got your money back <laughs> you died on the spot. <laughs> That's right. So when we talk about the postcard fest, um, juxtapose it with your regular practice, aside from the fact that you want to be less personal to a stranger, aside from, oh, aside, from, aside from the fact that you want to be less uh, personal with a stranger because, you know, they don't, in my, in the words of my uh, lovable sister, Barb, hmm. I don't think people want to get postcards about your prostate cancer. <laughs> no, but yeah, it's, it's a strange thing, isn't it? I mean, I think, you know, the, the, all these amazing compromises we make every single day, you know, to go down the street, to, to park wherever we want to do. I mean, actually, we're very compromised. So my supermarket, which I'll show you opposite. I'm not allowed to shop in my supermarket before 10 o'clock, because even though I've got Santa's beard, I look too young. So that's a compromise, um, but it's not a compromise because I get to drink coffee for two hours before the shops open. Um, but uh, yeah, so yeah, so it's it's it's. It, in fact, for me, it wasn't that much of a compromise. I just felt like I feel like in my artwork, I want to present all of me, and I, I, I maybe I just wanted to say, look, I do write about nature because I use I use nature in my work, and. Um, but there is, there is another strand to who I am. So, I mean, people don't have to see every part of you, part of you every day, do they? You know, it's good to hold, hold things back. Please read us your poem. Yes. So, um, yes, okay. I'm going, to, I'm going to lay my poem on the floor. So this is, my poem's here, yeah. It's a very short poem. And um, I'm gonna show you um, at the end. I'm going to show you my Instagram address because um, I was at the beach that inspired it today. And um, 
so people can look at, um, at the actual rock formation that inspired my poem. So my poem is called uh, Fisher, and it starts off. Crack, break, legion, saw. A hole that leads from the bottom of the rock to the top. Work at it with cement. Glue two parts together. Render plasticized to allow movement. Works on buildings. Teutonic plates might be beyond its reach. And I'm going to show you my Instagram account there. You see that? Philip Riley.961. Yeah. And so my, have... poem, my poem was inspired by uh, this, the amazing rock formations here in Cyprus. The rock is like a really sandy rock and you can actually chip it away at it with your fingernails and you can carve it. So obviously it's very porous um, and uh, obviously good for sculptors. So I was on the beach looking at the rock formations and I was thinking about the last two poems I needed to send to my last two um, friends on the Popo system. And I wanted to be a bit more personal. So my poem sounds like it's about the rock formation, but it's obviously about something more personal as well. Yeah, some something regarding your own personal substrate. Yes, my substrata is deep. <laughs> um, you are you visiting Cyprus? No, so I kind of um, I came to this place called the Cyprus School of Art about four and a half years ago um, to do like another degree and um, an art degree, and um, I just really liked it a lot. And um, like being here, really like the people, really like the natural environment. And also as a photographer, um, the light here is absolutely amazing. So um, possibly, you know, I mean, I don't, I haven't been to California, but here, if a leaf falls from a tree and falls onto the floor, it creates a still life just in, that, in those few seconds when it falls onto the floor. So you can't really go take really bad pictures here. So, um, that's a really cool thing as well. But the people are really nice. There's a very genteel culture here where people still invite you into their homes. They have to give you a cup of tea. Um, and yes, it can be noisy. The traffic is really very, very challenging for English drivers who like to stop a lot and uh, who like to pause because people don't really pause when they're driving here. But uh, generally, I have a really nice time. Well, um, how would you go about my getting a little tiny black and white picture of my dad? And he came here as a um, uh, to practice parachuting because he was in the army and he loved it apparently and came here six times. And I didn't actually know that until I came. So, you know, it kind of felt right, right to be here. So there's a bit of personal mythology there as well. Yeah. And also North, Northern Cyprus, which is illegally occupied by by Turkish people. And um, I don't know, it's one of these, it's one of these hidden kind of um, political situations. So Cyprus is now divided uh, into a Northern Territory, which Turkey occupy, and most of Cyprus, which is obviously independent. But all the people, all the Cypriots who had houses in the North lost them in 1974. So my friend told me about her family home, which was in the most beautiful part of Cyprus. And they've never been back. People ran out of their homes in 1974 and never went back. So all their family photographs, all their documentation was left. And um, two years ago, I did an art project about it. So from, from, from when my friend told me in the early 90s, um, it took me till 2018 to actually do a project about um, refugees and losing their homes. Can you tell us, take us through a, a typical composition process when you're writing a postcard poem? Okay, well, well, I was, I, I was talking to some friends about, about this last night. So I don't know whether you know the um, novelist called Alan Hollinghur, Hollingshurst. He wrote The Line of Beauty. It's a really, that's a really excellent book. But one of his more recent books is about a, um, a, a kind of someone researching a, a poet for his thesis, um, his PhD. And um, he, he talks about this 19th century poem, uh, poet and his private letters. And he says, he says in this novel, the novel's all about the ephemera that gathers around poets and um, his historians love because it's, pre it's tangible. But in this day and age, we don't have ephemera. It's all on the computer. 
So unless someone takes your computer or steals your identity, they'll never know the workings of your poem. So what I do which, um, with my poetry, I write drafts, but I keep the drafts. And um, at some stage, if I was to, was to print them, I'd actually like to include the, include the drafts. And um, I've got an example of this on my sheets of paper. So one of the words I used in my poem called Fisher was this word here. So this word is plasticized. So I kind of knew that this was a word, but I don't use plaster. So I thought I'd made it up and um, it's actually spent with a Z and it's not hyphenated. But I actually, for my poem, I, pre I prefer it. So in my draft, there's several versions of this word. And actually the word itself is also, you're allowed to spell it many different ways. Obviously there's an American way with a Z, a British way with an, a C. So um, that's the sort of technical naturalities of keeping my po poems and, and altering them. But I generally write once and then I, I have lots of ideas and then I, I transfer the ideas back to the original poem. And it could go over a day or it could go over a series of days. It depends if I'm struggling over one sentence or uh, what idea I'm trying to get across. But they normally come quite quickly. What about the cards you received? Oh, I just, I felt very moved, felt very moved. And um, the people who, who sent me cards, um, I really want to say thank you and I'm waving to you and um, thanking you for your time and for the beautiful postcards. Some of them were pho photographs that people had taken. Some of them are collages like mine, but they all came with a really, from a really good place. And um, for me personally, they, became, they came at the very beginning of our lockdown in the UK. And um, it, it, they made me feel very much in touch with my American friends. And luckily, although you could be a very rabid uh, Trump supporter, I, I felt like, um, you know, Trump hasn't finally gone. But, you know, in March this year, when our brains could attach to lots of depressing thoughts, the idea that Trump would be elected in eight months time was very, very depressing. But all the people who um, wrote to me were Democrats. Elaine Boozler, the comedian, um, calls Trump the Manchurian cantaloupe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, he's hanging in there, isn't he? Um, but uh, yeah, but you know, I mean, I didn't want to make this political, but you know, I mean, you know, it's a, it's a really, it's an amazing, amazing flag that has been waved by America to say, we don't want a right wing government. We don't want a buffoon for a government. And obviously in our country, we have a quite educated buffoon, but he's still a buffoon. So um, yeah, so I'm hoping the sig your signals will lead to positive change in Europe as well. Well, from your lips to God's ear, it's been a difficult four years. And um, the poet Clarissa Pincola Estes says, uh, the one who says no good will come of this is not yet listening. So I'm optimistic that some good will come of this. Um, even were it to be the dissolution of the United States into about nine smaller countries that were less powerful and more livable. That absolutely, and also it's it's about the people's voice. You know, you know, whatever happens in the next few weeks, the majority of people wanted a change in government, and all the people who fought to get Biden elected, you know, they are they feel vindicated and their voice has been heard. And you know, when we're talking about poetry, it's about a voice being heard, isn't it? And um, you know, getting back to your original question, I heard the voices, the positive voices. Uh, from people observing nature, observing their life from America. And, you know, on a wider scale, we've heard people's voices saying we want a change. And that, and that, that alone, you know, political cha change takes a long time, doesn't it? But actually to hear, to hear your voice reflected in other people's voices is immediate. How do you suppose we could get more people from the UK and outside of the United States involved in Popo? 
Well, I'm doing, I'm doing my bit. I'm trying to hashtag you as much as I can. Um, we just need to get like some kind of Facebook presence, don't we? And, um, you know, possibly get some press coverage. I mean, it's not like, it's a really exciting thing. And actually, I mean, I don't know how many of these interviews you're, you'll have amassed, but perhaps we can approach a poetry magazine or something even a bit more, you know, left field, like, um, I don't know, a newspaper, um, you know, and try and get it, you know. I mean, you know, people are looking for stories, aren't they, about, you know, triumphs during COVID, post, you know, you know, artists working within the, the, uh, the pandemic. And this year has all been about every single poem has been written in the context of the pan pandemic. So, you know, you've got, you've got a whole book of poetry, haven't you, that reflects people's private lives in the pandemic. And that, that is worth listening to, isn't it? Well, I think so, but you're, you're, talk, you're preaching to the choir. There was an anthology a couple of years ago called 56 Days of August. And uh, we have uh, that under our own control now uh, because the publisher went out of business. Um, but I, I have to tell you the spirit and attitude you bring to Popo, as I can discern from this conversation, is exactly the kind of thing that we were after at the beginning, or at least I was after. And it's what makes part of, it's what makes this a community, is that people yeah. understand. It, it, it felt like a community. Yeah. What is a website where we can see more of your work? Um, yeah. I have got a website. Um, I'll, I'll post something back to you. I'll, I'll, I'll do it by um, an email. You can disseminate it. Excellent. And do send a bio but, um, as part of that. If, but if, yeah, and also, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll write a little bit about my, um, uh, what I do with nature here in Cyprus. But um, I, I update my photographs every day on Instagram. So if people want to follow me, they'll be able to see, you know, the weather is incredibly beautiful here as it is in Los Angeles and, and, and in California. So uh, there's things being updated every day. And I'm, I'm living um, in, uh, with a man who deals with uh, all the archeological sites in Paphos. So he teaches me something about the, uh, the great history of this place. It's the birthplace of Aphrodite. So, you know, it's an extremely historic place. And Larnaca, which is on the other side of the island, is one of these places that's one of the oldest places of habitation in the world. So um, I know it's that, that's much claimed, but yeah, it's, you, you really feel in touch with uh, ancient spirits here. Excellent. And should anyone Google you, um, you're not a football player. Hmm. No, I, I'd like to be. Um, I could show you my legs, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but no. We'd have to, you'd have to put the phone down and go from a wider angle to get that to accomplish that. Yeah, well, I'm very <laughs> tall. I'm six foot tall. I'm having to crouch to get my face onto the, onto the screen because actually my natural height is this. I see. Well, Philip, it's been a delight engaging you. Do email me with any information about your process you'd like to share and links to any social media sites where we can see your work and, um, Thank you for being part of this community yeah, and I and, wish you continued yeah. success. And thank you so much. You know, you've been so easy to communicate with and your passion and uh, ease of manner has made it all so easy. So thank you. Thanks, Philip. Many blessings. Thank you, Sue. Speak soon. Enjoy. Okay. Stay bye -bye. well. Bye-bye.